What's up team, Sean from us to live here. And today we are talking about preferred stock. This is a really cool topic. Not a lot of people know about it, but it offers a great way to think about income investing, dividend investing, early retirement with income, lots of different ways to play this that might give you an edge over just common stock or a better return than just bonds. We're gonna cover the differences against bonds, the differences against common shares, thinking about how we might wanna play this in our portfolio if it makes more sense to use an ETF versus individual shares, as well, as well as some other key components here. Now, as always, I don't wanna waste time. I'm gonna jump right into this, but I am gonna ask if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button, subscribe. I don't always ask for that, but the algorithm seems to really love it. So please do really appreciate it. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into the pure basics here. When we talk about this idea of preferred stock, it's this idea of a best of breed between bonds and common shares. If we were to smash those things together, what comes out in the middle might be this idea of preferred stock because it's going to have some shared features of both of those two things, right? We want the stable and consistent income payment that we get from a bond, but we don't want the low payment. We also want some of that equity ownership or that holding of the company and that ability to potentially see some appreciation, right? So that we can easily trade it, come in and out of it anytime we want, and also frankly leverage some ETF availability here as well. So that's the best way to think about it at a high level is that it takes features from both common shares as well as bonds and tries to do a little bit of the best of both worlds and find a happy medium. Now, the real key here is that we know that preferred shares are going to offer very regular and very consistent payments that come in the form of dividends. This is really important for folks who are looking at income investing in general because we need that consistency. And a lot of ETFs in this space will pay on a monthly basis. This is very similar to, as you might imagine, bond interest payments, right? Now, again, similar to bonds, when we think about preferred stock, they get issued or they come out with a face value or sort of we might call this a par value. Now, par value is used to calculate dividend payments and has nothing to do with its trading or the price that you get it when you buy or sell it. Okay, so I want to say that again. The dividends are based on the face value, the coupon value, the par value. There's different ways to call it, okay? So when you're buying in the markets, whether it's an individual company or that ETF, we're not, we're not thinking about it in terms of face value or preferred value. That's just simply the trading price. And that can represent a discount or premium to that underlying value. Now, another big difference between bonds here is that preferred stock is not debt and it's not going to be repaid, okay? So income that comes from these holdings of preferred shares does get preferential tax treatment since its qualified dividends are going to typically be taxed at a lower rate than bond interest payments as well. So I want to say that again, there is some value in the way that taxes work in terms of preferred stock. But again, always get advice from a CPA or a tax advisor on that front. Now, the other thing I'm going to call out too is bond interest payments are guaranteed in writing. And if they don't pay them, then they're in a situation of default. That's a serious thing. Now, preferred shares do have preference over common stock in terms of getting paid, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are guaranteed it. It just means that in order of importance, you're going to get them first. Okay. So I hope that makes sense, right? You're getting an advantage of being first in to get paid out before anyone else does. So the other thing to keep in mind too, you might say, okay, well, what if it's a scenario where we want to pay less to everybody? This is pretty much covered, right? Common stock dividends will typically be eliminated, cut in half, cut down, whatever the case might be, before it starts to hit those preferred shared dividends. Um, because just in general, that would be a bad sign for the company, a bad sign for holders, and not what anyone's going to want to see. So companies are very careful about how they manage that process as well. Now, this isn't very likely to happen, but it's still an important thing to call out in the public markets. Um, in terms of preferred stock priority, this is who gets paid first in the case of a bankruptcy or a liquidation event, or just in general going out of business, right? Bondholders are going to be number one priority. They're going to get paid first and foremost. Next up will be preferred shareholders, and then finally common shareholders. So you at least have a better chance of receiving some sort of liquidation payout on those holdings than if you just had common shares of stock as well, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, again, we did a little bit of preferred versus bonds. What about common versus preferred? So of course, very similar, not much more to explain here. Common stock, as everyone knows, can trade up and down wildly. It can pay dividends or not pay dividends, and it really does represent ownership in the company. To me, the biggest difference at its most basic level is that with common shares, you will have voting rights, okay? This means you can vote on um, issues within the corporate governance. This means you can vote for the board. You can have a say in compensation. You can have a say in third-party 
um, tax advisors. With preferred shares, it is very rare that you have voting rights. I've actually never seen it, but it can happen. So just keep that in mind as well, that there is some advantage if you want to be more of an equity holder, more involved, have a say with your voting. Now, my gut, though, is a lot of people don't really vote their shares, but even still, it's worth being aware of this fact, okay? Now, also, there's this advantage of being more of a regular or scheduled dividend payment with a preferred stock versus a common stock. Common stocks can change your dividend rates at any given time. That happens very much less so with preferred shares. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, here's the thing. The upside risk of preferred shares versus common shares can be significant. If you own common shares, in theory, there is no limit on how high that price could go. Now, I know this is not a practical way of looking at it, but it's important to make the point. Theoretically, the underlying common share could be any price to infinity. In general, bonds and preferred shares are gonna rise very slowly, so you will not see that kind of burst upwards in price. So there's considerations on whether or not those dividend payments and consistency are worth it in terms of what you give up on that growth side potential. That's why you have to understand why you're doing this, why you're investing in it, and what the purpose within your portfolio is. For me personally, if I want to add income, I think about preferred shares. If I'm looking for growth, I'm absolutely not looking at preferred shares, okay? Now, the other thing that's particularly interesting, and especially for those who are newer to the realm of stock market investing, preferred stocks can be called away. I want to say that again. You can own preferred shares in a company, and they can be called away. Now, that will typically be converted into common shares. You can perhaps uh, receive some sort of a cash value. But with common shares, this won't happen, right? So after a certain date, uh, the company can recall preferred stock shares. Now, this might be at the par value. It could be slightly higher than the call price. It could be sort of on what makes sense at the time of it happening. But keep this in mind, it may not be what you paid. So this represents some risk as well, because if you paid at the top price of the trading value and they get called away below that price, you're just getting what it is at that moment in time. It doesn't matter what you paid, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, I mentioned this quickly, but I want to say it again. Preferred stock can be convertible to common stock as well. Um, and this, this does happen every so often. It happens to me as well. It's not something that I'm necessarily concerned with, but you want to be aware when those dates are, if it's likely to happen. You can do this by looking at the prospectus, reading what's on the uh, investor relations site, and even calling in and asking if there's information you need on that as well. So keep that in mind. So the big question here for me is, how do I typically like to play preferred shares? I don't really want the stress of going out and looking at each individual company's preferred shares, what the face value was, what the current trading value is, is there a discount or premium, I'm trying to figure out what the current dividends are going to be, what kind of consistency there is. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do research. In fact, that's the opposite of what I say on this channel all the time. What I am saying, though, is that there's easier ways to play preferred shares in a more diversified way with a little bit more predictability in what's going on from the underlying perspective. And you probably have an idea where I'm going with this. This is simply looking at preferred shared ETFs. Now there's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, I do have one that I particularly have in my portfolio, but to be clear, I'm not at all recommending this. So I'm gonna actually like pump the brakes for a second and say it again. I am not making a recommendation on this. It's just one that for me, I've had for a long time and I've been relatively happy with it. So purely as an example, um, I'm gonna share my screen here. I just pulled it up here. Let me just hit that button real quick. <clears throat> there are many different ETFs. In fact, if you have better ones, please drop it in the comments below for people to do their own research. This is just one that's already in my portfolio. And again, not a recommendation. When I think about my personal portfolio, I have it broken up into growth, income, speculation. And then outside of, my, outside of this, I have private investments, real estate, alternative investments. So this is one pillar within a much larger play. So I'm only calling that out because don't try to copy what I'm doing because you don't know what my entire portfolio looks like and how it's built. So PFF is the name of the ETF that I typically play. You can see here that um, just actually it was up 1.22% um, the other day to 34.77. What I like about this is really simple, right? If we look out across the all-time view here, it's pretty much been within this channel. Yeah, it's had some highs, it's had some lows. But really, this thing's been pretty darn consistent. And even if we look across just the past five years here, <clears throat> excuse me, barring that huge dip, which I held everything anyways, we pretty much got right back to where we were. And of course, we're sitting in the current dip period, but we're starting to trend back up again. The reason I like this is it means that I have access to everything that's in here, 
And it's just a one-time sort of hold for me. It's sitting sort of in the middle of that 52 range. It's also pretty close to even from a premium discount perspective, but it pays a monthly dividend of 4.68% at this current price. And that comes up to a little bit more than 13 cents per share. Now, again, the reason I like this is 4.68 for a relatively, you know, I'm using this word generously, safe investment in an ETF focused on preferred shares. For me, this fits really well with my portfolio to provide a little bit of income um, just to generate that within this portion of my portfolio. Now, I'm not saying again, that this is the right thing for you, but this is how I'm thinking about it is that 4.68% is a pretty nice yield. I'm not expecting the price to go up or down too much and it fits within the strategy that I'm using. Now, what's interesting when we look at the portfolio here, <clears throat> I always like to click things before I do it live, but I didn't preload this. So you're with me. We're going to see if it pulls everything up here. What's nice is you'll get a feel for sort of what's within here, right? So it holds 16 different holdings. Um, we can see the yields here from the SEC perspective. And we can see what is exactly in here from a top 10 perspective, right? Broadcom, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Nextera, Citigroup, Danaher. Um, these are all sort of different holdings they have in here from the standpoint of income and preferred shares. We can get an idea for what those maturity dates are, as well as the cost basis for what's going on, right? This breaks it down by sector and industry weightings. So there's a lot of stuff in here you can read about. And you can also easily go to the iShares perspective on their own site to get this information too. So all I really want to get across today was that there are other things than just bonds and just common shares. There's this sort of in-between piece that takes the best of both worlds, pushes them together, and makes it really easy to own and put them in your portfolio. Um, again, for me, it's easier to do an ETF. For you, it might not be. You got to know that and make that decision yourself. But overall, I think it's worthwhile to at least put your eyes on this. But especially if you are a dividend investor, you're chasing fire in early retirement or financial independence, or you're just looking perhaps for something else to have within your overall portfolio to provide that little bit of income and a better yield than sort of common shares or even, frankly, bonds, this might be a good little thing for you. So with that, I want to keep it pretty simple. Hopefully it was. If you have different suggestions, if you think I'm completely out of my mind and there's a better way to do this, please let me know. I'd love to hear down below. Um, and with that, you know, thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate it. And let me know what else I can do. Have a good one.